Hello everyone, welcome to Red Best US channel. In this video, we'll look at the entire 2020 in context of US immigration. We'll look at the various changes and issues that are related to H-1B visa, H-4, H-4 EAD, F-1, green car, travel bans, all sorts of things that you can think of. So this is what we will cover in this video. Uh, and uh, you know we'll, uh, we'll cover each of the sections and then uh, we'll get to that. So if you haven't subscribed, do subscribe to our channel for getting regular updates. So firstly, we'll start with H-1B visa changes. Uh, so the, the one of the first things that happened earlier this year is uh, they introduced the concept of uh, registration process uh, for H-1B filing. Uh, in the past, uh, you had to file the entire H-1B package on April 1st and you were getting, you were giving you a window of uh, five days. Now they changed that uh, starting this year and they introduced this registration process where uh, the employer has to register uh, the applicant in the online system and they pay only $10. And if you are selected in the, in the lottery, then basically you get to file that within 90 days yeah uh, so that is that is the big change that happened uh, this year uh, now in terms of lottery there were about 275,000 uh, H1B registrations that were received for this in fact uh, uh, the f there was also second round lottery because not all applicants who were selected in the first round were able to file that so there was a, this was a second round lottery in uh, early August as well on this uh, so there was a Trump travel ban for related to H-1B for H-1B holders and their dependents, which is H-4 holders. Uh, that was uh, effective from June 22, and uh, this has been stuck uh, in uh, you know for quite some time. And there were lawsuits on this. Um, eventually, on October 9th, uh, there was a court order that actually gave uh, the plaintiffs who were part of that uh, travel ban, uh, you know, some uh, relief. Uh, but again, it, you know, many concerts were closed, so it didn't really help a lot of uh, H-1B holders. So many of the H-1B holders who were supposed to come to US who have been stuck uh, in their home country and they could not uh, travel to US. Uh, so there was a USA settlement between uh, USCIS and uh, IT serve. So IT serve actually, you know, uh, basically bought, uh, you know, had a litigation that was happening in, in court uh, that was primarily uh, on itinerary requirements and employer-employer uh, relationship and a lot of other things, right? So USCIS came, came, came into settlement because they lost the case and that uh, revoked that entire H1 policy memo and itinerary requirements. Uh, as part of that, uh, you know, all the employer relationship requirements, uh, itinerary requirements, you know, where you had to provide all the day-to-day -day activities, work order details, all of these were cancelled. So all of these um, stand cancelled as of today. Now, in terms of other aspects, uh, so uh, USS or DHS rather, uh, you know, launched uh, this uh, strengthen H-1B program regulation, uh, you know, without a public notice and comment period. And on October, they published uh, directly into the federal register. Uh, this has all sorts of things like uh, one-year approvals and uh, you know, a changing uh, definition, you know, on employer-employer relationship. So everything that was revoked in that, you know, they put all of these things in this. So this was a very last-minute one uh, without any public comments. Um, so they had an empty number of changes uh, that that were actually bundled into this uh, uh, strengthen H-1B program regulation. Uh, so eventually this was uh, this was set to um, go effective in, in the first week of December. Uh, there were many lawsuits filed as well on this and uh, this was actually cancelled by court because uh, DHS did not have a good cause exception to actually skip the notice and comment period. So that was happened. So the second biggest regulation that was launched uh, this year by again by Department of Labor uh, again skipping the notice and comment period was also around the same time and this was a primary really aimed at changing the wage levels uh, you know for h1b and perm uh, you know holders yeah so what happened with this was uh, essentially if you were uh, uh, on h1b uh, you know based on the revised wage levels you had to be paid uh, at least 30 to 40 percent more or even more uh, you know in many other contexts yeah so this was a huge uh, hassle for many of the people or h1b holders who are looking to renew their h1bs and all uh, so this also did not stand in court there were lawsuits filed there were about three lawsuits and this was cancelled in first week of December yeah. So this, this created a lot of confusion. Uh, so this also did not make it and uh, it stands cancelled as of today. And also there is a new regulation uh, that was actually published uh, by uh, DHS, uh, you know, that the H1, new H-1B lottery will be based on wage levels. If you look at the H-1B lottery today, it is uh, basically a lottery. There is a, it is a random selection. There is nothing, there is no priority for anybody. Uh, but what they're saying is in this, uh, in this uh, you know, new regulation that uh, uh, they, they want to introduce the concept of uh, wage levels. So people with highest wage levels will be picked first and uh, people with lowest wage levels 
examples will be picked later yeah so this is what they are proposing and again this is not final yet they only had the comments period and uh, as it stands today this is not final and uh, we have to wait and see what will happen so this has a huge impact on especially uh, you know doctors and all of these people who work in rural areas uh, who have a lower wage levels so uh, again uh, so this is a, a irrational logic in some aspects uh, but of course it's a, log it's a logical argument in some aspects again this has to be somehow reconciled by us uh, dhs otherwise this will have a court litigation as well so as it stands today this is not final so we don't uh, you know um, uh, you know have it effective yet in terms of premium processing for H1B, so they increased that to 2,500. This is based on a uh, Congress uh, bill. Um, this was actually a big appropriations bill that actually included this um, uh, 2,500. Of course, this also applies to I-140s and other things uh, that were actually had premium processing. Now, in terms of H4 and uh, H4 EAD changes, so H4 EAD, uh, you know, rule removal, basically, you know, this is the one that Trump administration had in their agenda for quite some time. So it was both in, uh, you know, in spring and fall regulatory agendas, but uh, nothing was actually taken, no action was taken because there were a lot of uh, flaws in their analysis. So this was, uh, yeah, this did not happen. I mean, it's, it's, a, it's a positive thing for all H4 EAD holders. So H4 EAD continues to be valid as of today. And now Biden taking office is a positive thing because because um, H4 EAD was actually given during uh, Biden's uh, and Trump or Biden and Obama era admi administration. Yeah, and uh, so again, the second aspect on H4 EAD is uh, there is still the lawsuit that's happening uh, in court by Save Jobs USA. It is currently litigated in district court, so there is no no real update since October. Uh, so there was joint status report uh, that was filed, and all uh, Save Jobs is asking for a faster decision. But uh, you know the DHS and other uh, uh, interveners are asking. You know we want to wait for the elections and everything so this is currently where it stands so there is no real update since October uh, there were a lot of delays in H4 uh, processing uh, and uh, EAD delays because of the biometrics issues and uh, all these uh, closure of uh, you know uh, application support centers so many H4 holders lost jobs so some could expedite uh, but many could not so this has been a very sad situation for many H4 EAD holders also there is H4 and uh, H4 EAD premium processing that was uh, uh, you know there was a bill that uh, was passed in Congress that had uh, that introduces H4 and H4 EAD premium processing not just for these uh, but for many other things but again this is passed in Congress uh, but it is still not implemented by USCIS yet so we have to wait and see when the regulation comes out so uh, this is something many are waiting for it uh, in terms of F1 changes, so, so there was a uh, uh, CVP that actually changed uh, some regulation to, uh, you know, uh, you know, send out saying that on July 6th that F1 students uh, who are enrolled in uh, universities that are not operating uh, in in uh, in person or, or fully online mode, they have to leave the country. And MIT, Harvard, uh, many of them uh, took this to court and eventually DHS canceled it. Yeah? And also ICE arrested about 15 students uh, in violation of OPT. So they ran a secret program called Optical Illusion. Again, this is one of their enforcement things and this was actually uh, around the uh, around the uh, around the election time that they actually released um, so we don't know the real intention behind it uh, so there is a proposed regulation for a few F1 students on uh, changing the uh, you know en entry duration uh, from uh, duration of status D slash S they call it uh, to fix a duration. So this is not final as well. But uh, today you know if when they enter and they get an ID for um, you know somebody puts in a D slash S uh, meaning they can stay in the country as long as they maintain the status. Uh, but they want to, Trump want to, Trump administration want to change this. So this has been uh, you know they got enough comments for this, but it's not final yet. So this is going to be big one. Um, you know if it becomes effective for many of their fund students now in terms of green card uh, you know on public charge so the public charge rule uh, became effective uh, since Supreme Court uh, created the way in Jan 30th and there were many lawsuits uh, that were filed in the middle and as of today um, there was back and forth and uh, as of today it stands uh, effective and uh, you know you need to file the I-9444 I uh, form uh, that uh, is tied to public charge yeah? so there's also a big uh, change uh, that impacts a lot of green card applicants so Trump had some rumors on merit-based immigration. He made some comments in public uh, tele, uh, in interviews and all, but it didn't go anywhere. So that uh, standard has a rumor as well. Uh, so there was a bill, uh, you know, HR 1044 and S386, which had a lot of attention. Uh, it was passed in Senate as well uh, this year uh, and House, uh, you know, already passed. So on December 2nd, but did not make it to the final stage due to amendments in Senate. Uh, you know, there was one of the biggest clause was uh, uh, the association with Chinese military and uh, uh, Chinese uh, uh, Communist Party were the big clauses that, uh, you know, you know, uh, many believe as a poison pill for that. So this was uh, this was geared towards removing per country uh, caps and discrimination against nationality. 
happy so this did not make it unfortunately uh, no the other one is uh, there was a big priority date movement and employment based uh, green card categories uh, you know this uh, was published in october uh, essentially due to the closure of uh, all the consulates so all of the family based ones spilled over to employment based so many benefited especially internationals uh, got huge benefit so it moved uh, by few years for uh, some of some of the categories yeah so it's a big one uh, for internationals in terms of uh, dhs um, and uh, uscs uscs um, had many of these uh, uh, ac application support centers closed uh, there were biometric delays so uh, uh, the recent update is there are about 1.3 million applications that are waiting biometrics and they can only process 10400 per day so if you just do the math it's about 125 days just to clear the backlog and if you factor in all the new ones that are filed that's going to be huge so do expect that there'll be a lot of delays there uh, so they uh, also dhs gave flexibility to respond to rfes and a, and a, a notice of intent to deny so they give a 60 day flexibility if uh, you got this any time between march 1st and January 1st 2021 yeah so this is also a, a good provision that they gave so us has introduced a discretion policy for uh, the expanded it to h4 f1 holders and many other uh, many other categories as well so this is something very important uh, if you uh, had any status violations uh, they would actually look at it on the, on a whole and uh, you know they could apply this as well so the fee increase was put on hold uh, because it's blocked by court there was a huge increase that was planned uh, so the other one is uh, there was i9 uh, form compliance uh, that had uh, you know uh, which requires uh, in person verification and things like that so that one because of covid it's not possible so dhs gave that flexibility and they extended it until uh, january 31st of 2021 uh, again there are there are also ead card delays uh, because card printing delays so that, that's why they also gave another provision uh, that you can actually use approval notice until february 1st 2021 yeah so this related to dhs and uh, uscs now in terms of us visa stampings uh, so us consulates continue to be closed in many places due to the covid uh, many are operating in only in emergency appointment uh, services mode only uh, so the DHS or uh, I mean Department of State gave a Dropbox option that extended the 12 months from expiry to 24 months from expiry. Basically, it means that if your visa was expired in the last 24 months, then for visa renewals, you could use Dropbox. And this uh, they recently extended it until March 31st. So this has been something uh, they want to, uh, you know, they've done to help with the COVID situation. In terms of uh, some confusion, there was, a, you know, if you check your uh, U.S. visa stamping status on uh, CEAC website, uh, you know, it suddenly showed uh, rejected or refused for many. And um, they didn't, uh, they changed some uh, text and this is uh, continues to be a problem for many people. And, uh, you know, instead of administrative processing, it shows refused with long text. Uh, so this is something uh, that has created a lot of panic among many. Uh, so again, this issue still exists today. Uh, so do not panic on that, right? Uh, and U.S. consulates in India continue to be closed for regular operations. So they're only accepting Dropbox applications uh, and uh, for F1 students and emergency appointments so they've significantly reduced the number of appointments they're given and they're not approving any many emergency appointments as well so this is uh, this is where it stands today uh, so as, as as we speak uh, you know the you know the uh, Trump travel ban um, you know seems to be uh, you know continue <laughs> seems to be continued it's not, not officially confirmed yet uh, but yeah so uh, check out the news on that right so overall, uh, so these are all the updates for for uh, for this uh, 2020 uh, year. Uh, you know, it's been a very uh, difficult year for many. Uh, hopefully, you know, we get over this, all these things, and uh, it'll be a, a good year uh, 2021. So again, thank you for watching. Uh, do uh, subscribe for getting regular updates.